Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Uh, it seems that every time you open a journal these days, there's an article about uh, shortening the uh, duration of DAPT after PCI. So today uh, we're going to look at the guidelines, uh, go over some of the data, and talk about what we're doing uh, with dual antiplatelet therapy after PCI in 2023. So uh, the most recent formal guidelines for duration of uh, dual antiplatelet therapy uh, date from uh, 2016. Uh, but in 2021, um, there were some updates in the uh, clinical practice guidelines for coronary artery revascularization. So what do these guidelines say? Well, uh, for DAP during PCI remains fairly standard. Uh, all patients undergoing PCI should get loaded with aspirin and a P2Y12 inhibitor. For stable CAD, um, loading with uh, clopidogrel is the uh, class one recommendation. For ACS, uh, loading with ticagrelor or prazogrel is uh, reasonable. And um, for the right patient, um, there was a recent trial, ISR REACT 5, uh, which was a head-to-head uh, -head comparison between ticagrelor and prazogrel for PCI and ACS that suggested that prazogrel uh, might be better in terms of reducing death, MI, or stroke, and it uh, did not cause excess uh, bleeding. Um, however, uh, in those patients with a history of stroke or TIA, uh, prazogrel uh, should not be used. Uh, what about uh, duration of DAPT after PCI? Well, in a nutshell, uh, after PCI for ACS, the uh, 2016 guidelines tell us to continue DAPT for, uh, for 12 months for most patients. Uh, if patients uh, is at high uh, bleeding risk, then the P2L12 inhibitor can be stopped at six months. And if there is low bleeding risk, then it may be reasonable to continue DAPT beyond 12 months uh, for certain patients. The 2021 guidelines add this additional category uh, shown here in green. Um, there is now substantial data that show that for most uh, ACS patients, it is reasonable to stop aspirin at one to three months and continue P2Y12 inhibitor uh, uh, monotherapy. The changes are uh, similar uh, for stable uh, CAD. Uh, the 2016 guidelines recommend uh, six months of DAP for most patients, uh, three months for high bleeding risk, and greater than six months for certain patients with low bleeding risks. These have not changed. And as with ACS patients, the 2021 guidelines for stable CAD added the new category of one to three months of DAP, dropping aspirin and continuing with P2Y12 inhibitor monotherapy. So uh, where do these new recommendations come from? Well, um, one of the largest trials to look at shortening DAP was TWILIGHT. Uh, this was a trial that we were involved in. Um, in TWILIGHT, uh, patients were on aspirin and ticagrelor for three months and then randomized to either ticagrelor alone or to continue aspirin and ticagrelor for up to 12 months. Uh, the trial included uh, really only high-risk patients by which they met either uh, with high clinical risk or with more complex coronary anatomy. And what they saw was that uh, three months of DAPT followed by ticagrelor alone led to significantly less bleeding and was non-inferior for all-cause mortality, MI, and stroke. And importantly, there was no difference in stent thrombosis at one year. Okay, so what if we don't mandate the use of ticagrelor uh, as the P2Y12 inhibitor? Well, that's what Smart Choice did. In this trial, uh, patients were on DAP for three months followed by either a P2Y12 inhibitor alone or continued DAP for up to 12 months. Uh, here, uh, three quarters of the patients were on a clopidogrel and the remainder were on either ticagrelor or prazogrel. And as in twilight, uh, three months of DAP uh, led to less bleeding and was non-inferior for all-cause mortality, MI, and stroke. And there was also no difference in stent thrombosis. So if three months of DAP is sufficient, what about just one month of DAP? Well, that's what global leaders looked at. Uh, this was an ambitious uh, European trial enrolling nearly 16,000 patients. Uh, in this trial, uh, all patients uh, received aspirin and ticagrelor for one month and were then randomized to uh, ticagrelor alone for 20 more, uh, 24 months or aspirin and ticagrelor for up to a year followed by aspirin alone. Um, the one quirk here is that all patients received PCI with a drug-eluting stent with a biodegradable polymer coating. 
And in this trial, they found that while there was a trend, uh, one month of DAPT was not superior to 12 months of DAPT in terms of all-cause mortality at two years. And uh, like the three-month DAPT trials, there was also no difference for MI, revascularization, or stent thrombosis. However, uh, surprisingly and perhaps uh, disappointingly, there was also no difference in bleeding, uh, including uh, BARC-305 uh, major bleeding. All right, well, what if instead of uh, ticagrelor as monotherapy, we use uh, clopidogrel instead? Remember in Plato, the ticagrelor group had more uh, non-procedure related bleeding uh, compared to uh, uh, clopidogrel. Well, uh, that's what they did in STOPDAP2. Uh, in this trial, uh, patients were randomized to either 12 months of aspirin and clopidogrel or, clopidogrel, uh, or uh, one month of DAP followed by clopidogrel alone for up to a year. So in the one month group, patients could, at the physician's discretion, be either on clopidogrel or on a low dose of prazogrel uh, at 3.75 milligram, which is not a typical dose available in, in the uh, United States. And they found that one month of DAPT uh, resulted in significantly less bleeding, again, uh, with the caveat of the unusually low dose of uh, prazogrel. And one month of DAPT was non-inferior for MACE, and as with the other uh, short DAP trials, uh, there was no difference uh, in stent thrombosis. Well, okay, so what if instead of using P2Y12 inhibitor as the monotherapy, we just went to aspirin after one month of DAP? Well, um, I am not aware of any randomized uh, trial data uh, looking at this question, uh, but there are a couple of interesting single arm studies. One was the Onyx-1 study uh, using the uh, Resolute Onyx uh, DES, and the other is the uh, Zions-28 study using the Zions uh, DES. So uh, here in Zions-28, uh, patients with high bleeding risk uh, received DAPT for just one month, followed by aspirin alone for up to six months. Uh, results were uh, then propensity matched against historical controls uh, who received DAP for six months. And what they found was that one month of DAP resulted in less major bleeding and was non-inferior for death or MI. And reassuringly, there was also no difference uh, in stent thrombosis. Uh, the results for Onyx-1 were similar. So these studies have, uh, to some extent, uh, relegated bare metal stents uh, to the history books uh, in many cath labs. All right, well, uh, if one month of DAPT is sufficient for some patients, what about just no DAPT at all? Well, uh, this is what Stop DAPT 3 looked at. Um, in this trial, uh, patients were randomized to either prazogrel or aspirin and plazogrel uh, immediately after a PCI. And the results just came out at the ESC Congress uh, earlier this year. Um, there was no significant difference in bleeding at one month between the two groups. And um, more ominously, there was a significantly higher rate of stent thrombosis and unplanned revascularization in the patients who did not receive any DAPT. Again, uh, somewhat disappointingly to me, uh, as a practitioner in, in the United States, they used 3.75 milligrams of prazogrel, which uh, is an unusually low dose and, and could have uh, contributed uh, to the higher uh, stent thrombosis and unplanned uh, revascularization rates. Mm -hmm. But um, my take from this is that um, there probably is a minimum duration of DAPT uh, that is needed uh, after PCI. But what about uh, complex PCI? I mean, surely with multivessel stenting and, and, and complex PCI, there would be a disadvantage uh, to short DAPT, right? Well, a uh, recent meta-analysis of five trials involving nearly 23,000 patients uh, addressed this question. Here, they looked at the subset of patients with complex PCI, uh, which included CTOs, uh, bifurcations, uh, long stented segments, multiple stents, multiple vessels. And patients were on DAP for three months, uh, uh, one to three months after PCI, um, uh, followed by either uh, P2Y12 inhibitor alone or continued DAP uh, for up to 12 months. And somewhat surprisingly me, uh, surprising to me at least, is that short DAP did well for both complex and non-complex PCIs. And for both complex and non-complex PCIs, shorter DAP resulted in less bleeding and without additional risk of fatal or ischemic events. There was also no difference in definite or uh, probable stent thrombosis. 
So uh, these authors uh, concluded that collectively uh, their findings challenge uh, the central role of DAP beyond one to three months and support a practice shift toward early initiation of monotherapy with a P2Y12 inhibitor after PCI, irrespective of uh, procedure uh, complexity. So, um, so given all of this, are there any cases where you would actually want to have longer DAPT? Well, um, for that, we reached back to the old DAPT study from 2014, uh, which showed that 30 months of DAPT significantly reduced stent thrombosis in MACE compared to 12 months of DAPT, but at a cost of an increased uh, risk of uh, bleeding. And based on the study, Robert Ye and his colleagues uh, developed a DAP score in 2016 to help identify patients for whom DAP up to uh, 30 months uh, might be reasonable. And some of these factors are intuitive. Uh, uh, vein graft, PCI, longer stent, and MI intuitively uh, increase the risk of thrombosis and favor longer DAP. Uh, older age uh, increases the risk of bleeding and favors shorter DAP. So in essence, if your DAP score is um, uh, greater or equal to two, uh, then prolonged DAP up to 30 months may be reasonable. On the other hand, if your DAP score is less than two, then prolonged DAP is not uh, recommended. There is one big uh, caveat though. Um, the uh, DAP study included uh, many patients who received first generation stents, uh, Cypher and uh, Taxes. Remember this trial was from 2014. And we know that the uh, first generation stents are more prone uh, to uh, stent thrombosis than the latest generation stents. So it's not really clear to me uh, how well uh, this study uh, actually applies uh, to the modern era. All right, so where does this leave all of us? Um, well, in my mind, it has always been uh, the balance of ischemic risk versus bleeding risk uh, that determines uh, the uh, optimal duration of DAPT. Uh, Deepak Bhatt uh, put out um, this nice flowchart in Jack earlier this year, which I am flagrantly copying uh, and, and modified uh, just slightly. So if the bleeding risk is high, uh, then one month of DAPT followed by clopidogrel monotherapy is well supported. And there is also non-randomized data that supports the safety of aspirin uh, after one month of DAPT. Uh, if the uh, ischemic risk is high, uh, then the traditional 12 months of DAPT is reasonable. Um, and if ischemic risk is very high and bleeding risk is low, uh, then continuing up to 30 months uh, might be reasonable. And um, if you are somewhere in the middle, uh, then three months of DAPT followed by ticagrelor uh, monotherapy uh, is well supported. Thank you for watching.